Hey, welcome back, Long Rodders. Welcome back from that long break we had there. We're back in and ready to tie some flies for you. And if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you subscribe. We get lots and lots of people that watch our videos that don't subscribe. Make sure if you're on Facebook, you hit the subscribe button or go to our channel and subscribe. Don't forget to do that, like and share our videos. And don't go away. At the end of this video, we're going to bring you some information you're going to want to hear. In today's video, we are going to learn how to tie the Quill Gordon Nymph. So let's get to the vise and learn this very cool fly. EFF Fly Fishing. Let the action begin. We're going to start, we already debarbed the hook, and we're going to tie on a gray. It's almost the same color gray as the quill uh, strip peacock will be. So we use that gray tying thread in a 70 denier. And we're going to run that all the way back to the back of the hook. We're going to tie in a gray and white mallard. It's just the gray and white. Instead of a lemon wood duck, we're going to use white and gray. We're going to measure the tail for the length of the hook, shank, and tie that in for our tail. Now we're going to apply some light gray dubbing. And you just like I say, so you want to put it on real thin, and you want to make sure the guard hairs are in there. You know, them little pieces of guard hair sticking out make a better action in the water as a nymph. So we're going to tie light gray up to about the thorax area. Now, for the thorax area, we're going to use a darker gray uh, ice dubbing. And we're going to apply that to the thorax area. Now we're going to take some of that black and white wood duck feather. We should have some left. We shouldn't use the whole thing for the tail. And we're going to tie that underneath to represent legs. And tie that down securely. Now you're going to throw two sets of whoop finishes on this fly, head cement it if you want.
And there you go, another fly in the books. Let's take a closer look at this amazing fly. Hey, hope you that tying video. I'm glad you're here to the end of this because I want to show you something. I found this in my list of uh, things I've been collecting for the last with over 30 years of tying. And I forgot I had it, but check this out. Okay, let's see here. I'll do a zoom in for you. See? Hair's ear. Now how close to that fly that we just tied Look like a hare's ear. You know, the gray, the darker gray. Hare's ear. Which is neat, but I want to show you something else that we'll discuss more of how these are different than most of your mayfly hatches. Here's your nymph pattern. We just tied one, but I want to explain that to you in the next video, tomorrow's video. So you make sure you uh, subscribe and don't miss tomorrow's video how this nymph compares to all all the other nymphs are different than this in one way and we'll tell you about that tomorrow like I said when we talk about the mergers and that's what makes it different this this nymph will really work like he says you can use this as a hair's ear um, I'll read a little bit of this to you um, in our area it says New England Pennsylvania the Poconos this stir starts around the a little bit before the 14th of April. Southern New York at Catskills starts more like around the 28th of May. Northern New England and Adirondacks, it starts around the 7th of May. Oh, wait, no. Wait, the last one. Southern New York at Catskills is around 28th of April. And then Northern New England and Adirondacks would be the 7th. And Midwest, the Great Lakes region, would be around the uh, 21st of April and they are a clinger nymph and what they uh, cling on the downside of rocks and what happens then is they get swept away as the current comes through so you know the nymphs would be better off fished at the end tail waters or currents or something where they got washed into the tail pools right at the end and uh, that's, you know, I'm glad you guys are all here. Uh, we were shut off for a while, uh, which really stink. But uh, make sure you guys always stay to the end of our videos because we're going to give you all kinds of information after the tie. So always stay to the end of the vid video because we are always going to give you more information. Like I said in the beginning of this video. And you're going to fish these in, like I said, currents. And they're going to be on the back side right around that time. I mentioned and they're going to start getting sweeped out as they're starting to merge. They're going to get sweeped into the current and the fish are going to gorge themselves on these nymphs. So make sure you tie some up. We're going through all the hatches. Um, this is the first one in the Quill Gordons. Next we're going to do the wet fly tomorrow. Then, the, then our version of the dry fly. Or you can go back and watch the old version. I'll make sure I include it in all these videos. The uh, Catskills style type dry fly. You can check all them out. So, now, I will see you all tomorrow. You guys have a good day. And thank you for coming back and being patient with us while we had no internet.